Supposedly the other day YouTube's TOS, that's Terms of Surface, has changed. Now bear with me, the place I found this on was Drama Alert. Kevin Keemstar had stepped down? Something about losing his passion for the channel. Now this is the part where it gets super easy to be distracted. So let's take this in turn. Abusive videos, comments, and messages. See, when I said easily distracted, this might be super easy to go. Well, that would likely mean more than just Leafy's videos are here, but The Amazing Atheist, Sargon of Akkad's, depending on who you like, and, and if you're not thinking, that would be tempting to say this is a massive boon. I've already seen Gamer Gators trying to get their time-honored boogeyman for this problem. As fun as it would be to call you guys stupid, one, I'm not sure I can do that anymore, two, it, this has nothing to do with feminism, Muslims, women's rights, gays, the LGBT community. See, so far, totally distracted. This is good old fashioned fashion YouTube greed. As you can see with channels like Vimeo, but more and more mainstream YouTube channels that take clips from TV shows are getting more and more of YouTube's algorithm. And whether that's fair or not is another discussion. Mainstream media, not Jim Sterling, not Movie Bob, not Anita Sarkeesian, or whatever butthole gamer gators normally bitch about. I understand you guys like to blame SJWs for all the world deals, from women's voting to Ebola in Africa, but please, please focus. This is super important. And the sooner we get this fixed, the sooner we can go back to blindly hating on each other. Now there's some pretty simple ones. Revealing someone's identity. Maliciously recording someone without their consent. I understand... I was under the impression that these things were already against terms of service, so keep in mind I want to put some links to some other channels so that we can look into this further, deliberately posting content in order to humiliate someone. At first glance, this one seems benign. In other words, in the hands of someone who cared enough to properly handle this case by case, one might argue this is a good idea. Now remember, this is going to be policed by YouTube's glorious automated system. I've seen friends and been part of friends roasting one another. I I've picked on my girlfriend and she's picked on me. This is done to humiliate. Strictly read, this would now be against terms of service. What about self-deprecating humor? Someone who's bashing themselves. My question is, if a troll were to report this video, does anyone trust YouTube's automated system to know what to do? Just last week, Proto Mario got rid of a copyright strike by a 16-year-old false flagging him because the kid claimed to own rights to a Nintendo game. Not only did YouTube allow him to file the claim and give the strike, but YouTube upheld the copyright strike. Proto Mario only got the strike removed because, ironically enough, Leafy is here got involved and supposedly the kid re agreed to remove the strike himself. Self. Here are two videos on that, and keep in mind some of you guys might hate Proto Mario or not care, but this is the worst case scenario and we have a lot to look forward to. In the description, please, I'm going to include a link to YouTube CEO's Twitter where I would encourage you guys to politely express your dissatisfaction. Now remember, that example I gave with Proto and the copyright strike? Community guideline strikes are a different animal than a copyright strike. A copyright strike can be removed by the claimant at any time, and it shows who did it. A community guideline strike, after being filed, is out of that person's hand. They don't have to attach their name or legally put themselves in legal harm's way, as opposed to claiming something else as your own when it might not be. Community guideline strikes are done anonymously and have yet to heard of anyone losing their channel for filing false flags. But I could be wrong. Making hurtful or negative comments slash videos about another person. Again, at first glance, this seems like a great idea. Does anyone really think that YouTube is going to police its comments? I'm sure if someone big enough says something stupid enough, you might get a couple of cherry-picked examples made by YouTube. You might see a couple of mind-numbing troll accounts disappear. It would be super fucking tempting to giggle and laugh. But I don't trust YouTube, and I don't know anyone else who does. Unwanted sexualization that includes sexual harassment or sexual bullying. I already thought this was against terms of service. I've noticed I've heard the term in some of the videos I've linked, mild nuisances will be ignored. If I trust YouTube is going to ignore photoshopping someone's head into a say, busty model or someone having some goofy fan art done will count as mild nuisances. Who's to say what is and isn't mild? I mean, I understand. Some of the fan pictures I've had drawn, like say Postscript here, are things that the content creator has downloaded himself. When I first made this, I was trolling and I kinda still am. What if someone else decided to get offended for Postscript? You can do that with community guideline strikes. And once again, there is no way for being punished for filing one of these that I've ever seen implemented, including inciting harassment of other YouTubers or creators. I was under the impression that YouTube already frowned upon 
sending legions of your fans to someone else's channel to bust their balls. It's why when you see people like Jim Sterling or Proto Mario say, I'm not telling you to go here and do this for me, I simply think this is a friendly reminder of restating the rules. And since this was there before, I think this will be fine. So to help spread the word, share this video, like it, look up more videos like this, and do the same. Tweet these videos at the YouTube CEO I'm listing in the description. Use words like please watch this, please don't ruin YouTube. Do not act like a 4chaner in said Twitter. Some of my fans might ask, FNGR, what does this mean for your How Not to Brony series? Well, I'm glad you asked. Until otherwise, that series is moving to Fanon Frenzy. If there are no problems, it'll move back. The next one is going to be particularly harsh. And now more than ever, I'm rethinking releasing it. I wish you guys well and see you soon.